Hello everyone and welcome to the 7th tutorial of the Lost in the series. Today we are going to create a low poly skeleton in Blender. Go ahead and download the reference image from the link in the description. And by pressing N this panel will appear and we have access to the background image where we can open the image we have downloaded. Remember that you can only see those images in orthogonal view and we can enter in orthogonal view by pressing 5 that will allow us to switch between perspective and orthogonal view. And as you may have noticed the image is just a little bit tilted. But there is no problem with that. I have discovered that minus 1.2 in the rotation will set the image straight. Now set the axis of this image to the front axis. Add another image and set it to the right view in the axis. And I really recommend that you flip it horizontally. Since I only realized that it's the right direction a couple of minutes later. And if you flip the image horizontally, then the rotation will be 1.2 positive. So let's start with the femur bone and create a cube from the shift A menu. I am just lowering the opacity of the background images. Now, the idea is to create these bones with less geometry possible and to determine whether it's important or not to add a ring of vertices. This said, we can immediately see that the femur is bigger in the bottom near the knee and in the top it prolongs itself to something like a sphere. The final touch of the femur is that in the mid is a bit thinner. And that's it for our first bone. It's the most characteristic point of the femur bone. And now comes the right view. Now you can see that the bone isn't that straight and from the side view we can notice that it has a curvature and it's pretty important to do something very similar to this. After the femur bone is done, go ahead and create another cube for the tibia bone and use the same process we used for the femur bone. Only get the most important features of this bone. We only need to give a few adjustments on the side view and you are good to go. Remember that this is a low poly model, not a realistic scientific correct model, it's just for entertainment purposes. Moving on to the arm, the process is pretty much the same for the Ulan bone, this one which is right on top of the radius bone. And in the side view we can see that the Ulna bone is longer than the radius and that's what creates the elbow. The humerus bone is kind of similar to the femur bone, nothing really new. Just make sure to get the principal characteristics and you are good to go. And moving on, probably the hardest bone to create, the pelvis bone. I recommend you do from the side view as we have done, but this time you can immediately rotate 35 degrees and try to make something like a C shape as you may see. After we get to something similar to this, we need to make the pelvis larger when it touches the femur, because you know, they fit together. Then we make it a bit bigger, since this is a low poly cartoonish representation, and we can exaggerate in just a few points, but be careful to keep your proportions right. The fit is pretty much composed by several cubes that fit together, like this, and they are smaller in the mid and when they touch each other they get a bit bigger in the extremities. I did everything with cubes since it will create very little amount of face and it's very useful in the game industries. Just don't forget that, as you may see in the right side view, the foot has a bone that will create the heel, something like a sphere. So go to the right view and try to follow the reference. After you have done the first finger of the foot, you can easily duplicate with shift D and create the other four fingers by scaling down a few bones and getting the proportion right. 
Just align them and put them in the right position and we can go to the end. The end is basically the same process. Recreate one finger and duplicate it to create the others. Just scale them down a bit and never forget to keep the proportions right. And use the reference so you can make almost no mistakes. And we are almost done, we just need to model the clavicle. And first we model from the front view as always. But this time we go to the top view and as you may see, the clavicle is like an S shape. Now we create the sternum to hold the thorax, this bone right here. And it is a bit thinner compared to the other bones and is pretty easy seen from the front. Just remember that from the side view it has a rotation of something between 15 and 25 degrees as you may see in the reference image. Moving on to the scapula bone, we can see in this reference from the sketch fab made by Graft that this bone is something like a triangle and it also fits nicely into the humors like this. You can also always start with a cube and then go ahead and try to replicate this form. It is also a little bit tilted seen from the side and that's it. Now comes the Tara, composed by 11 ribs in just one side. Now going back to the reference in Sketchfab, we can see that the two ribs from the bottom are not arced as the other ones. So let's start by creating them with a cube. And the ribs I created for some people may be a bit thin, but that's up to you. You can decide on it's more dense or less dense. Now, the idea for the ribs is to make them like a semicircle, kinda oval, and they get smaller and smaller until they reach the neck. And as you may see, they aren't that orthogonal or straight, no, they tend to go down and up, they are arced. Once we understand how they are made, it's easy to model them. And as you may see, this is the first rib that touches that mid bone, the scapula, and it has quite some curvature. I duplicated most of the ribs and just scaled them down to ease the process. That really depends on the details you want. Now, one of the last parts is the scrum and the coccyx. These bones, as you may see, I started modeling according to the front view as usual and just half of them, since we are going to use a mirror in almost every bone really soon. And we can see in the side view that it has a C shape, it is a C shaped bone. And this one is going to be almost mixed with the pelvis bone, something like this, as you may see. Okay, now the vertebral column is pretty easy. Just use half of a cube, since we are going to use a mirror, and start modeling in front view, as usual. And seen from the side, it's actually like an S shape, as you can see. Uh, it's nothing really special about this one, it will be under the skull. In the last tutorial I made an easy explanation on how to create a skull and give you a few tips, so go check it out if you want to make a skull, it's really easy. Then just make these small bones on the bottom and near the neck. The last part is to create a plane next to the coccyx or the pelvis. I just selected this vertex and press Shift S and set the cursor to selected. Now with Shift A, I create a plane and rotate it 90 degrees in the Y axis. And select every bone, select the plane in the mirror object and set it to the, y, to the Z axis. This way, the last selected bone will get the modifier, but the others won't. But that's no problem, there is no problem with that. With Ctrl L we say that we want to link every bone to the last selected bone modifier. And just like this, every bone will get the mirror modifier. That's it. Eventually align the ribs with the column and give a few adjustments and tweaks, you know, something that doesn't really, really make sense to you. I made a few 
adjustments. Finally, I select every bone, give a pale yellow material and again with Ctrl L, I say that we want to link every bone to the last selected bones material. And that's it. And now that we have done all that, we can put our skeleton somewhere nice in our scenario. Make one laying around, the other one is missing an end or an arm, you know, just play around, make it look awesome. And I really hope you did get a nice understanding of the physiology of the human skeleton. This was a quite condensed tutorial. It took me about two hours, more than two hours to make this. And there are a lot of information that has to be condensed that has to fit in a small tutorial like this. But I really hope you did understand. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. I tend to reply quickly. And that's it guys. So thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.